In today's episode, we have something really cool for you. Welcome back guys, my name is Phil, this is Miranda Detailing. We have this 1929 Ford Model A, Ford Model A, I think it's a Ford Model A, hot rod, and it's in for a paint enhancement and a ceramic sealant. Guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, and I hope you are, consider subscribing, clicking that bell, so you don't miss stuff. So let's take a look around the 29 Ford. This thing is so cool. A cool story behind it as well, and uh, we're going to polish it, we're going to gloss it up, and we're going to protect it. Now, as we look around the vehicle, this is not a perfect 100% show car. Uh, basically, the customer wants it, uh, in, in his words, to be a five foot car, not a 10 foot car. What that means is from 10 feet away, it looks great. From five feet away, it looks really good. That's what we're talking about here. So not nitpicking, not going up so close that you see all the little imperfections uh, because he drives this, he enjoys this thing. It's, um, it's been in his family for a long time. There's a lot of history behind it and uh, a lot of sentimental value behind it as well. So very cool, let's get started. Now, as we look around the Ford, uh, we're gonna point out a few things. This is not a kit car. This is actually steel body construction. Um, it was just redone, repainted um, to be what it is today. The, the interior is also, looks so awesome. And check out that stick shifter. And this isn't automatic. It's actually an automatic transmission. Man, is it cool. Now the top is actually this rubber material um, that's actually like a marine material. And even though he drives it, it does not sit outdoors. So it does not get a ton of sun exposure, which is good uh, because the top here would most likely fade out. It's still in excellent condition. Uh, the paint is actually in, in good condition as far as gloss and everything, but it is swirled up. We'll, we'll show you uh, the, the condition of the paint. Really cool chrome and aluminum wheels. Some nice pinstriping back here. So we have to be careful about that. I'm gonna check it and make sure it's underneath the clear coat, not on top of it. Nothing on the interior. We're not doing any detailing on the interior. Now, as far as the engine goes, we are gonna detail it, but you know, we don't detail engines like show car engines because we just don't get a lot of that. And, and the customer doesn't really need that or, or want it. So we're gonna get in here as much as we safely can without taking anything apart or anything like that. Once again, it's, it's not necessarily a show car, even though he does bring it to shows or bring it to cars and coffee and those types of places uh, to kind of show off. But this is not necessarily going to be entered into concourse shows to win awards or anything. It probably could, because it is really, really cool. It also has the fiberglass hood here. So this is um, fiberglass, and we are gonna polish this as well. Usually he just keeps it off because you want that exposed. That just, that's so cool. So let's take a look at the paint. And when we look, yeah, you can see swirls, there's buffer trails. Somebody hit this with a polisher at some point in its life and it's just very, very hazy. It just doesn't have that, that depth that it really should have. And um, I did a little test. I found that it, it should be base coat, clear coat. I did a test right here, just rubbed it with a little bit of polish with an applicator and the applicator did not turn red. That is a sign of it being clear coated. If it turned red, it would have been single stage. But yeah, you can definitely see lots of buffer trails all over the place. Yep. And as we look at the pinstriping here, it's underneath the clear coat, so that's good. Oh, really? The pinstriping on the fiberglass? Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. That that might be on the surface because it's picking up the reflection differently than the one in the back. That, that could have been painted after this was painted, or maybe if it was at the same time, I'm not sure. Maybe the pinstriping was a, an afterthought. There's pinstriping here as well. I think that is under the clear coat though. So we're going to pick a combo and uh, do a couple of test spots and see where we can get this thing looking. Now, I'm gonna give it a quick rinseless wash. What we're going to use, we just have a bucket and we have the little sponge here. I have my clay bar, so we're gonna clay bar as we go along and feel the paint. No need to do a traditional wash on this. I'm not gonna do that, which means no chemical decon. So no iron removal, anything like that. And we're still gonna polish it, it'll be totally fine. Um, but we're just not going to risk pulling it out and doing all of that, we, we just don't need to. So a rinseless wash, yeah, isn't that nice? So that little red sponge there, that came in one of the glove box detail boxes. I think it was one of the, I think it was last month's, or was it this month's, I can't remember. This month. It was this month, it was April? I think so. Yep, okay. 
uh, and it came with the DP products, which is cool. So we're gonna get to use that um, and probably some microfibers as well because there's two of us washing. And what we'll do is mix up a solution. I have two different options here and now I know these are actually waterless washes, but in essence, they do the same thing, encapsulating dirt and all of that and cleaning, so it's okay. I actually have this mixed up in a little bottle here, and this is already pre-mixed. This is from the glove box. This is glove box RX. These little cartridges here you put in the bottle, and it pre-mixes everything perfectly and dilutes everything, so we're going to use this today along with this. We can clay bar with these as well. They're, they're lubricating enough. Uh, and if we need more lubrication, then we have other, you know, clay bar lubricants as well. But these work fine. And remember, we're going to be polishing this. So even if the clay bar does leave a little bit of marring, it doesn't matter. No, we're going to polish it after anyway. So it's not a big, big deal at all. Same with the wheels here. We're going to clean all the face of the wheels after everything is done. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. So I know this is kind of a mix, a uh, combination of a rinseless and waterless. I'm using a waterless for a rinseless method. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me because again, it's just cleaning the surface and getting light dust and dirt off and that's it. That picks up the dirt, kind of keeps the dirt in the towel as well. And this is lubricating enough and it cleans well. So totally fine. If I need any heavy cleaning or degreasing, then I'll take out a degreaser and go from there. <laughs> Sounds like a nut hatch. Yeah, this stuff uh, has, uh, I guess I would kind of call it a cologne smell. Some people like it, some people don't, but I like it. I think it smells very luxurious. That's the RX products here. Glove box RX, that is. Now I am uh, heating up the steamer. I'm going to use the steamer on the engine for certain parts and get that looking nice. You do the whole back area? Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to use this clay bar. Oh wait, no, I didn't do that fender. Sorry. Oh, it actually, it actually has a little bit of grit and I think a little bit of overspray. Yeah, it's not horrible. Picking up a little bit of red on the clay. Again, that could be overspray. I really don't think that this is single stage. But once again, once we start polishing it, you'll, you'll really see. And, and again, even if it picks up a little red, it doesn't necessarily mean it's single stage. Um, parts of this may have been painted at different times and sometimes overspray gets on other panels, red overspray. It kind of looks like it's single stage when it's not. See, a little bit around the edges but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's single stage. And this wireless wash from Glovebox RX is uh, it's pretty lubricating. So yeah, you can use it as a, a, a clay lube. It works pretty well. And I'm using AM clay and AM clay really doesn't require water. I mean, <laughs> water it doesn't require uh, a lubricant, it just needs water because it is a very mild clay, but it's also very effective for being a mild clay. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm picking up, I'm picking up little, little bits of stuff. It's not horrible, but I think it does need to be done. This must be really fun to drive. Oh, yeah. It's so cute. I'm sure it turns heads. Yeah, it turned our head. Yeah, so the initial story of this is uh, there's a, a, a Starbucks nearby that we like to go to. I've actually met quite a few people there um, with their, their vehicles, um, and one of them was that BMW motorcycle that we polished a while ago. If you want to check that video out, I'll have it up in the card. And that's, you know, how I met that guy. I basically just walked up to him because he was there having a coffee and chilling with his bike, and I went over and started a conversation, and uh, I told him I would... Uh, detail his motorcycle for free just for the video, just because it's it's really cool. And, uh, and then, you know, interviewed him because there was a, a cool story behind it. So, yeah, and, and there is, there's a, you know, some story behind this as well. So we'll see if we can interview the owner. Ha, there's like nothing on this. I don't think this uh, fiberglass hood even gets <laughs> put on often. 
the slightest amount of overspray. See, a little bit. Now, as far as wheels and tires go, I'm gonna use this for the wheel part. Let it sit there for a little bit. And I have some CarPro Multi-X in here. So I'm gonna use that for the tires. It's a little bit, you know, stronger of a, of a cleaner um, than the wireless wash, of course. And we'll let that dwell on there for a little bit. Hey babe, can you hand me a brush please? Like a wheel brush or a, like a bristly, a bristly brush. What? Something to get in these lug nuts. A bristly brush. That's perfect. Nice. Yep, I have the steamer going for the engine and we're gonna steam that a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. There, looking good. Well, for the engine, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Jay Leno's Garage all-purpose cleaner and just spray in some of the grungier parts. I'm not going to douse it completely, just where I need it, and I'm gonna steam it. So just a let, I'm good. Nothing. It's all cool, it's all cool, 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 cool. And then use the air compressor, whatever nozzle you want to clean, and just kind of blow everything out. Very little moisture was introduced. I'm not worried about electronics and other things like that because this is actually also a very simple engine and uh, we don't have a lot of electronics to cause any type of risk. So a little APC, a little bit of steam, dry it out, you're gonna be completely fine. You made a mess of my paint. Oh no, no, no. Oh, no! So Ow. No! Not that. No, I see a little bit of oil leakage here. Just a little bit. So, yeah, that's just, you know, part of having one of these vehicles. They're gonna be leaking a little bit. There's a few little areas in here I can get my brush into and, oh yeah, make, make it look a little bit better. All right, the engine's looking pretty decent. We're gonna go in there and polish little metal bits uh, when we're done with the paint and all the chrome up here, we're also going to polish. We will most likely use the AM glaze for a lot of the chrome, that actually works really, really well. And we also have some of the AM metal, which we can use this for uh, any of the more heavy duty polishing, but if it's already glossy chrome, I'm just gonna use the AM glaze instead because that works really well on already glossy chrome. So let's see what we can use to make this paint look awesome. We have some of the one and done compound. It's one of my favorites, so we'll use that. Test it out. You may have noticed my pads here. I actually uh, got a Velcro strip that's sticky on one side and cut it to length all the way down. So I can actually just stick my pads right there and they're good to go. Now I don't put that there to dry. They, they must be completely 100% dry. I don't want moisture building up in the cabinet. So, my drying rack is over here. This is where all of my mitts go to dry and that center drying rack there, it's, it's empty right now. This is where all my pads go face down. So we'll use some of that. We're gonna test it out, test the paint and see if it's hard, soft, where we need to go with it. And then we'll uh, use that combo all around the vehicle. Now I also have another polish here that I picked up and I actually bought this because Somebody on YouTube said that this is like the only polish you'll ever need. Just use this compound polish. It's supposed to have some ceramic abrasives in it. It's supposed to not have any fillers and supposedly you can do, uh, you can use a ceramic coating right over it without a wipe down. That is unconfirmed. I can't corroborate that because I haven't found any other information. So if you know, if you can use a ceramic coating right over this, if it's designed to do that, because it doesn't say, that it's designed as a primer polish, but if polishes leave no fillers and leave nothing behind, essentially they can be coated right over 
you know, uh, using a ceramic coating without a panel prep, in theory. Um, so let me know if you've used this product, if you like it, how it works for you. Is it the miracle product? You know, is it the only product you ever need? I'm hearing that a lot. You know, not just of this product, but anything. They're like, all you need is one compound, one polish. No, no, that's not true. If you're running a business, that's not the case at all. Uh, if you have your own vehicle that you're working on, that's all you'll need. But no, as a detailing business, you run across all sorts of weird things. Who knows what we're gonna run across on here. So we need a variety of compounds and polishes to get the job done because you never know what you're going to encounter. Detailers also need to be problem solvers and know what their products can and can't do. But let me know if you use this product and if you like it, uh, we'll use some of this today as well. So we're making our way around the vehicle and uh, even though we are running into some weird little finicky panels, uh, for the most part, it's coming out really nice. So here's what the paint looks like currently, pretty much everywhere. And now, mmm, that's nice. What? Oh, your double shot. <laughs> so I haven't touched the door yet, but the fender over here, mmm, tasty. Nice, right? Yeah. On the other side, the door, uh, was finicky. It's like really soft and micro marring with the combos that we're using, but that's okay. We'll we'll finish those portions down when we when we get to them. For the rest of it, yeah, that's looking very nice. And I'm kind of saving back here to do a nice 50-50, but wifey just polished up here. Oh, so much nicer. Very nice. So down here, ugh. Up here, ah, oh. mm. ugh, ah. Oh. I'm gonna try. Should I use this for the micro marring? Yep. Polish. Use the hybrid solutions and see how that works. So on this side, Wifey's already pretty much polished this whole side. There's there's parts of it that came out awesome, and then there's parts of it here that are very. Whoops. And there's parts of it here that are still kind of micromarred. You can see. We we want to refine that a little bit more. Yeah, some weird little weird little areas here. So yeah, and there's uh, there's maybe some sections over here too that need a little bit more help. They came out almost perfect. How come? Isn't that weird? Is yeah. Is it like... No, it's steel. Huh. It's steel. It's it's. Uh, I tested it with the magnet, and it's it's steel. Yeah, it's just it's just strange. And over here, the fenders, they came out really nice. So, it's just some portions were probably repainted with another batch, or at a different time. Who knows? Usually, jobs like this, the the vehicle's in there for a long time being painted. I mean, the paint job is nice, but yeah, it's just refining time. <laughs> All right, hold on, let's get the light. Let's get the camera. Let's Lights, get camera. action. Here's what we found. She just did this panel with the black pad and Hyper Solutions, oh, one and done. Here, there's a weird no. imperfections eh. here. Oh, okay. Because uh, there's weird, there was body work done there. Oh, okay. But in there, it was perfect. Whoa, but oh my gosh, look at that. Look how clear. It's still weird. Yeah. Ugh. That's okay. It's but it's refining here, it. It's looking, oh yeah, so much better. Oh wow, yeah. That's crazy. That's that did an amazing job. We're using the same same liquid, the Hybrid Solutions One and Done Compound, and uh, it can be used to refine. That's that's awesome. Beautiful results. Perfect. 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 So the same thing is happening on this door, on as on the other side. It's slightly softer. It's responding differently than the fender paint. Why? I don't know. What I'm gonna do though, without wiping the residue off, I'm going to switch over to a black pad and finish down with the residue. It's another way of, you know, not having to fill the pad um, and use that residue. Now some may think, well that residue now is full of dead paint and all of that stuff. Maybe, but let's try something.
Wow. Did it work? Yeah, yeah, it, it worked. Mm hmm. What? Huh? What? It looks perfect back here. Oh. So, here's where I haven't polished yet. Really bad, right? Mmm. Oh, so much better. Still, just a little bit of smearing. That's just from the, you know, the polish residue. Just a little bit. Oh my goodness, but look at that. Yeah, so that's the difference. Huge. Yeah. Just look at that. Just look at it. Cutting with this, leaving the residue, and then switching over to a black pad. If you want to add another dropper to, you can, but I didn't. And I just finished down with the residue that was on there. And that's the result. From that to that. From that to that. So. Yeah, that, I polished over that. Not that, I don't know. I polished over the rest of it over here. Yeah, I think it's it fine. is under the clear coat. But this one definitely. Is yeah, different. I can't, I can barely feel it and I can, yeah, I can see that it's underneath the clear coat. That's good. Good, 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 good. Huh, wow, this paint really reacted well. I'm gonna remove this because it's barely sticking anyway. Mmm, oh, that is nicey. Nicey spicy. Yeah, use a little bit more. It's kind of heavy right there. So I'll do, I'll do another hit. So here is the unpolished side and polished. Mm, that's nice. And uh, I'm about, what, three feet away? So <laughs> yeah, with the lights three feet away, it looks extremely good. It looks close to like 80, 90%. You can kind of see the, the line there. You can go over the graphics here because they are underneath the clear coat. So it should look nice and clear when we're done. Mm, awesome, love that. Is that the last of it that you're doing? <laughs> I want to get it on camera, but you just keep doing stuff. I'm a good girl, I am. <sighs> so wifey is going around and hitting all the little areas with uh, the applicator here, like that. We don't need to get out the little polisher to do all of that. Um, it's just unnecessary for this job. But just doing that is glossing it up and removing a little bit of the, you know, imperfections in the paint. And yeah, that's kind of the final touch. It's looking awesome. Now you may notice too that I can switch back and forth between left hand and right hand polishing. Um, some guys find it difficult to do that, but I would definitely recommend practicing using both hands, both directions, because it does help with getting into some weird angles and spots. Uh, because just sometimes you, you can't polish with your preferred you know, side. You, you might have to switch it up. And you see how I will also angle the polisher, like so, upside down to the side, this way. You're gonna have to maneuver the polisher around certain angles on certain vehicles. Um, and sometimes you have to switch hands. So try to get proficient using both hands. 
Uh, another tip is just learn how to trigger lock. Always trigger lock, that's just what I do, um, because it allows for flexibility. So you can hold the machine like this if you need to, to balance things correctly, or you can hold it like this if you need to, without having to worry about holding the trigger. That actually can cause a lot more fatigue on your hands and on your fingers. So learning to equally balance the machine between hands and switch, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a skill that you have to acquire uh, when you're polishing. Uh, and for another thing, it's going to help lessen fatigue on just your one hand or your one shoulder or your one arm and your joints. Balance it out between all of your fingers, arms, shoulders, everything. And it, it kind of balances everything out. Another thing you could do, and I haven't used it in a while, is get those anti-vibration gloves, which are pretty cool. They do have those. And that, again, that lessens the vibration lessens hand fatigue and, um, you know, tendonitis and things like that. So, uh, or a carpal tunnel, you know, all those things pertain to your joints and your hand. It'll, it'll help tremendously, uh, especially if you're doing long, long hours of polishing. If you're doing like full paint corrections, you're spending a lot of time with that polisher. So getting those anti-vibration gloves, it might be a good idea, but learn to polish with both hands, balance it out, uh, that way you're not killing just your one shoulder, your dominant shoulder. Try to use both hands like that. This is looking good. I think I need to do a little bit down here, a little bit over here, but the rest of it, oh, maybe a little here on the gas cap, but the rest of it, yeah, it's looking so good. Oh yeah, looking much, much better. Nice. All right, now we're on to the chrome. And wifey's gonna use the AM Blaze with a little applicator and shine up all of the chrome. We're not going for chrome, you know, swirl removal like that. It's very difficult to do that because you can wear the chrome down. So we're not gonna do that. This is just for glossing it up, making it look really, really nice. Get all the smudges and streaks out of it. Mmm, that's nice. And it might fill in a little bit of those little fine lines, which is totally fine. <laughs> totally fine to fill in the fine lines. Ooh, that's Whoa, pretty. that's nice. Oh yeah, that just adds that extra pop. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, we'll use that on all the chrome, all the engine chrome pieces as well, and uh, probably even the wheels, but yeah, that looks gorgeous. back from our lunch and our coffee. Mm. <sighs> Wheels in the uh, tires are all done. The paint now just needs to be protected. The glass needs to be cleaned inside and out. This is the protection that we're going to use Gion Can Coat. This is the new version. You get up to a year protection. And what I really love about the packaging and what comes in the package is comes with three of these sprayers. Now you can rinse these sprayers out and reuse them, uh, but you might run into some issues. So you can buy these sprayers cheap. You can get a big package of them, which that's what I usually do. You can get a big package of them and they fit into all the, the different, you know, bottles like this. Usually these 12 ounce bottles or 16 ounce bottles, they'll fit into perfectly. Uh, it does come with a towel as well. And the application of this is super easy. You don't have to apply it like a ceramic coating. It's meant to apply with a towel, have two towels, an application towel, 
and then a wipe off towel and that's it. Very quick, very easy. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, as far as the polishing aspect and what was used, remember I talked about the CSI uh, ceramics polish. We did use this, actually Jess used it on that side and she was getting some good results, you know, but of course from panel to panel, it, it would kind of change. Then, you know, we found that the hybrid solutions one and done compound worked better for all the different multi, you know, issues, the multi paint issues that we we're dealing with. It actually worked better. The wipe off of this, however, was better. It wasn't quite getting the results that we needed on this vehicle. The hybrid solutions one and done was working better. It was cutting better, finishing down better. The wipe off on that is a little problematic sometimes. Just have multiple towels or just a mist of water or a damp towel to wipe it off. But the results were better. So isn't that interesting? Now, I'm not saying this is bad. This actually was, was working to a certain degree, but in some situations, you just need different products. I'm, you know, I'm going to have this in my uh, cabinet for other times and we'll use it. But in this case, the Hybrid Solutions One and Done Compound was the one product that we really needed for this job. It just works so well. Um, and the results speak for themselves. So as you can see, mm, beautiful. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep, that's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to get inside the vehicle to clean that glass. No. <laughs> no. You are. I guess I am. Mm -hmm. You have the artist for it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what happened? You dropped the bottle and the cap went flying somewhere? Under the car, I think. Ah, uh, all that complaining for nothing. Are you hissing at me? Are you hissing at me? How dare you? You can reach that windshield? <laughs> Look at right here. It's so cute. Aww. I think it's like aftermarket because he had to have that to be legal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Final wipe towel. Wait a second. You used some of this already, didn't you? You used some of the new Q2, right? No, it's good. I don't care. I'm just saying you did. Because No. Remember. Because it's, it's about a third of the way down. I thought, I thought it was brand new, but I guess you already used some of it. You used it the other day on the No, I used the old can coat. Maybe. I'm confused. Oh, well. So we're going to use the white towel that's provided as the application towel. Or maybe this is actually a really nice thin nap. Maybe I'll use this as the final wipe instead. Making all sorts of weird noises in there. All right, I'm gonna use the blue one as the application towel and the one that was provided as the final wipe. The, these are very, very similar, both short nap, but I wanna use the white one as the final wipe. So here's the application. This is super easy, but here's a tip that I've learned from a couple of other uh, detailers. This can cause some overspray if you just missed it. This, this cap uh, atomizes so well it can create a mist and it can get onto other things. We don't want that. So here's a tip. You go close up to the towel like so. And I'm kind of applying a lot to kind of prime it first. Let's apply it up here. I'm going to go down the fender here. And then final wipe with lights. Oh, and it's already flashed away, like super quick. So that's really easy. And it's nice and slick. I don't see any smearing. Let's check with the other light here. Oh yeah, that's, that is wonderful, 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 wonderful. That's nice. That's you. My name, Bobby. Oh, that's nice. This is one of the easiest applications. It's basically wipe on, wipe off, and you're done. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Alexa, be quiet. I'm not talking to you. How dare you? How dare you listen? So nosy. Always listening. It shouldn't be. 
that final wipe is pleasant. Everything just clears up beautifully. We'll apply the protection on all of the chrome bits. Remember, just make sure to have your lights, double check everything. Nice. All right, we'll just continue with the rest of the vehicle in the same way. One last thing to do is add windshield protection. And he requested that because when he does drive this, sometimes in the rain or if he gets caught in the rain, these little windshield wipers, that little one over there, doesn't do anything. So <laughs> we need some actual windscreen protection. So I'm using AM Details Rain. And uh, basically it's a, it's a strong rain repellent you let it sit on there for about five to 10 minutes. You can put a second application of it right over the first, and then you just wipe it off and it actually cleans off very, very easily. Not, not as smeary as say Rain-X or any of those products. All right, good. We'll let that haze up. And as far as protection on the top here, we're gonna use 303 protectant. And this is for both interior and exterior. This will add um, UV protection on the top here and it kind of enhances the black plastic as well. And since this is a weird texture, you kind of have to go with the grain of this plastic. So front to back, basically, not side to side. And yep, I'm gonna need a ladder because I can't reach. You can see that it makes a difference. That's unfinished, this is finished here. All right, detailing friends, check it out. It's done, it is looking Incredible. The gloss on it is insane. The chrome pieces against the red, it just, it's phenomenal. And honestly, it looked pretty good when it came in anyway, but the heavy swirling is now gone. Now you're left with intense gloss and clarity. All of the horrible swirling haziness and buffer trails, it's gone. I'd say about 75-ish percent um, more in some areas because some paint was a little finicky. Wheels are looking awesome. Tires are looking awesome. I had to get inside the back cabin here to do all the inside of the glass because there's no, there's no doors. There's no back hatch or anything to get in there. So you have to go in through here. The engine is looking awesome. All the chrome and aluminum pieces looking glossy and shiny. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sometimes the, if you don't let the, the car uh, RPM go up and let oh, it idle just for a while, it'll uh, do that. Man, in the sun, it is even better. That is a gorgeous red. Mm, yeah. Yeah, great work. Wow, 
I haven't seen it like this in a while. All right, guys, it is beautiful and sunny out, and I'm here with the owner of the 29 Ford. This is Scott, and uh, yeah, we just pulled it out into the sun, and it looks spectacular. So I just wanted to ask Scott uh, some of the you know questions about the vehicle, a little bit of the history behind it. Um, so yeah, when did you get this vehicle? Um, I know it's kind of in your family, but tell right. us a little bit of uh, the story behind it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, no problem. So uh, this is actually technically was my dad's uh, retired army colonel and uh, a former army ranger, and he bought it as a kind of like a retirement gift. He always wanted. He built one growing up in Idaho. I uh, had to sell it to go to college and then hit the military and never looked back. And uh, ended up finding his own car that he built at a, at a little car show in, uh, in Emmett, Idaho back in the day. Numbers matching, you know, it was chopped, it was leaded, it was gorgeous. And he found it and it reinvigorated the fact that he wanted one. So he ended up uh, uh, buying this in a, in a totally different state back in uh, 2003. I was deployed and he picked it up. And I uh, spent about 10 years deconstructing it uh, to figure out what was wrong and then putting it back together and putting more time and effort into it. Of course, it is a 29 Ford. Uh, definitely a daily driver here. This is not a trailer queen. Uh, full steel body, not a fiberglass. Uh, standard GM 350, uh, small block up front, made it to, to what is basically a GNX transmission. Um, and uh, about two inches off the ground. It's got 14s up front, 16s in the rear. Uh, it was a four-seater, but the, uh, the rear seat was converted, taken out for a larger fuel cell. So uh, I've taken this with my dad to uh, Carlisle when they used to have big classic car shows there. Louisville, which still happens. You know, you're talking tens of thousands of cars. So this is definitely a, a, a daily. Uh, it's got AC for, uh, for all the hot days in Virginia. <laughs> you know, functional pop-out front window, which uh, we never use because once you pop them out, you may not get it back in. Mm. Uh, shimmies, squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> all the good door latch noises, but it's a, it's a yeah. beautiful car, fun car to drive. And, and frankly, uh, as for a 29 sedan, um, this is the only one I've seen around the area. I've seen 32 Fords, 30, I've seen uh, 29, three windows. I've seen all types, but I haven't seen one like this. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been a fun car, fun ride. And, and you brought the paint back uh, to an immaculate, deeper, rich shade of red that I've, I've actually never seen. My dad has had it since 03, never detailed it once to the extent that you did. I mean, we're talking like standard spray on, spray yeah. off. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just a standard wash, but, um, I've, I, I, I'm looking for the swirls that I, I used to see and I've seen for the last like 20 years of my life and mm. they're not there. So yeah. fantastic job. Awesome. Looks Thank beautiful. you. Yeah, we, we had a good time working on it. You know, it had uh, some of the challenges like I explained in the video with polishing and you run across that with all sorts of vehicles. You got to kind of problem solve. Um, and I explained in the video too, but I'll just briefly go over, you know, uh, how we're able to get the car here because we've been detailing your other vehicles yeah. for quite a number of years. And uh, we moved down here uh, almost two years now. It's going to be two years in July. And uh, we went to that Starbucks uh, that's in our area here, about five, ten minutes away, uh, which we right. always that's go right. there. And, uh, and we actually met another person there who wasn't even a customer at all, but we did his little BMW bike, his old classic motorcycle. Same type of thing. I actually saw him hanging out there having coffee, and I walked up to him and initiated a conversation. I said, hey... I would love to do a video on this bike. I want some history behind it. And he nice. had such a cool story. So Sweet. if you want to check out that story, click up in the card above um, and you'll see that cool little detail on the motorcycle and the story behind it. We interview the, the customer as well. But same type of thing. I saw this sitting in front of Starbucks and I didn't have time to like, I'm not going to go in and, and ask like, hey, who owns that? That hot rod out there. Maybe I should have. Yeah. Well, but. It, it, it wouldn't matter because so he's out there. I see him and his wife through the drive through window. Yeah. I'm in the Starbucks and I start texting him. Hey, that's my, that's my 29. What's up, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. That was really, really cool. So uh, that's how we're able to, to get it here and be able to work on it. And uh, yeah, it, it's going to be very, very cool to maybe see it down in the future. You know, maybe see it, you know, shows and wherever you go, oh, yeah. take some shots of it so we can see what it looks like uh, wherever you do your travel. So thanks again, Scott. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely, man. Yeah. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. As always, the products, the tools that will be listed in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. 
so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.